This is a very basic example of how to get a sprite to throw a projectile in Scratch. Uh, right down here, I've clicked on the cat sprite, and you can see that uh, I have keyboard control over it. I'll run it, and the cat can move around. Um, and then I also have a baseball. And what the cat can do with the baseball is if the cat, whichever direction the cat is facing, it'll throw the baseball and the baseball goes until it hits a side and then it disappears. So whichever direction I was just moving is the direction the cat throws the baseball. So let's take a look at how that, how that works. Uh, the code here is pretty straightforward for movement. Uh, I have a forever loop uh, connected to a when the green flag is clicked. And then I have four if then blocks uh, inside of there. I have sensing blocks for all four keyboard arrows. You could also use WASD if you want. And for each one, I have it point in a direction and move 10 steps. Now for the baseball, it's a little different here. I have a couple things. Uh, to start with, and let me make this bigger so it's easier to see, there we go. Uh, to start with, I have set size to and hide. So you can make the projectile whatever size you want. And it's nice to have this here so you can just resize it. And remember, uh, you don't want the projectile to be seen until you choose for it to be seen. So that's why I put the hide block there. Then I'm also going to want this code in a forever loop. And the code itself looks like this. Uh, I have an if then with a space key. So the condition is you press the space key. And then when you press the space key, there's a couple things you want it to do. First of all, you want, you want it to go to sprite one. And you can choose where that is, but you want the baseball to go to the cat. Uh, the second thing you want it to do is point in the direction of sprite one. And this block right here is a little tricky to get. So the way I got this is I used a point in direction, which normally would be one of these directions, but since it's round, you can also put that block in it. This block, you have to go over here uh, to get it. And it looks like this. Um, when you change this to Sprite 1, then you get a whole bunch of different options. And I chose Direction. That's how I got that block. So it goes to Sprite 1, and then it points in the direction of Sprite 1, and then it shows up. Now, the next part is I want it to move 10 steps, but I want it to disappear when it hits the edge. So I put a Repeat Until block, and that's under Control. And this is, this is a conditional. So it's going to repeat moving 10 steps until a condition is met. And the one I set was touching the edge. So it shows up, and then it moves 10 steps until it touches the edge, and then it hides. And I put that inside a forever loop. Oh, let me get rid of that other block. There we go. Uh, and if I run it, So what we have here is when I hit the space bar, so the computer is looking in this forever loop to find out if this condition is true. And as soon as I press the space bar, it is. So the baseball goes to Sprite 1, it points in the direction of Sprite 1, and it shows up. And then it repeats moving 10 steps until it touches the edge. Now, if I want to make it a little faster, I could say move 20 steps. And now it's going a lot faster. Um, maybe you want that, maybe you don't. I could have it move a lot slower by only moving five steps. And there's other things, you, you know, you could put in a, a repeat 10 times or whatever, but I think this works better where it actually repeats until a condition is true, uh, until it touches the edge. So good luck. Um, there's a lot of small mistakes you can make with this. So look at this code carefully and replay this several times if it's not working for you.